Hey guys, Black Omen here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you remember in, in the past couple of months, we got a piece of information about a Ruby, a Team Ruby project. And we weren't given much information more than that. So the, the fandom was basically left scratching their heads trying to figure out what it all meant. We went, they would scour the website, they would try to find any bits and pieces, any sort of easter eggs that would sort of determine what this project actually was. And from what we remember, there was, from what I remember anyway, that the, the, the theme and the animation was a lot different from what we were used to in terms of the show Ruby. And it had a much darker tone to it. And when I was that kind of interested me because it was just, you know, it was a new approach, new animation, but there was still no information about what this was. There was people speculating whether it was going to be a manga or a, a new video game, or if it was going to be an animated series, or it was going to be a book. We didn't know until yesterday. A whole load of information was just dropped on us last night, and my god, this is, I am excited for this, guys, I'm excited for this. We are getting a new 2D animated show called Ruby Ice Queendom. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, with a name like that, the, it's going to be centered primarily around white. Now, I don't know if she's going to be the main character, or, or what the deal is, but I am excited for this. We are going to get, uh, we're going to be talking about some um, information about voice actors and the staff, uh, character images we're going to, we're going to go over, uh, but before we get into the more meaty part of this, of this piece of uh, news, let's... Uh, Let's go down the list of all the other information that we got. So, we got ourselves a, um, from the company Good Smile. They are uh, giving us a action figures, collectibles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they are going to be released sometime soon. I don't know when exactly, but... I myself don't really have a lot of collectibles of, of Ruby. I mean, I have I have one of Weiss, I have one of Blake. That's all about it. Uh, and I will say, I mean, if you are a person who does collect these kind of things, I would definitely say you should be excited for this. This is going to be a, a whole new, a whole new thing to add to your collection of Ruby-based uh, paraphernalia. I guess. Um, so, we are, uh, gonna go down the list onto uh, the, the next piece of news, um, that this, not only is this 2D animated series going to be, uh, available, uh, not only in Japan, which I had a concern when I first saw this, uh, a couple months ago, that I thought this was gonna be just in a Japan exclusive, which... I have no problems with that. I mean, I've watched plenty of animes that had English, you know, subtitles. I'm okay with it. But we're also getting uh, the, sh the animated series in America as well. So, I mean, I'm I'm excited for that. Uh, we're also getting we're also be getting a uh, a manga version of this uh, of Ice Queendom. Now. They have, they have done manga versions of Ruby that kind of was parallel to uh, to the original, the original series from Rooster Teeth, and it was more or less of a, a, a manga version of that, with like little bits and details that are minor changes. Uh, so if you're a big fan of manga, which I am as, as well, you should be, ex I, I definitely tell there's a lot of people who are excited about this, this is going to be awesome. The character designs uh, for the Ice Queendom is absolutely amazing, especially 
The biggest change of all is gotta be Weiss. Her outfit looks amazing. It makes her look more militaristic. I don't know if that, if that makes sense. Uh, believe me, when you see it, it will be it will make sense to you. So, the next piece of news uh, pertains to the the music, uh, which we all know we are all familiar with Jeff and Casey Williams and their body of work on on uh, on Ruby, and we all we all love it. Jeff has you know a track record of producing banger after banger and, and it's just like oh but um but don't worry even though jeff and casey williams are not going to be involved and this time around with uh, with this uh, with this new show uh we're going to be getting uh the opening it says the opening theme is going to be done by void chords uh, it's a song called Beyond Cells, featuring L. I'm not, not familiar with uh, this group in particular. But the, the ending theme is called Awake, which is going to be sung by Sayori Hayami. Which, if you're not familiar with Sayori, Sayori Hayami, she is the Japanese voice actress for Ruby. So that I'm excited for. So, I checked out uh, Void Chords, and they have done a, a, an, a uh, an, an anime intro for another show, I don't remember which one, but I was impressed with what they did. So glad that I got to check out their body of work, so that way I wasn't going to go in there and possibly being disappointed. Because if you're a fan of Ruby, you are, you probably love the music just as much as I do, and you have high hopes and you have a high standard for what you want in the show. So I'm going to tell you this right now that if you are a Jeff and Casey Williams fan on from Ruby, the original series. You will not be disappointed. So, moving on to voice actors and actresses. Uh, as I mentioned before, that Sayori Hayami is doing the voice for Ruby Rose in the Japanese dub, which, a uh, little fun fact, that she also does uh, the, the dub in uh, the original series as well. So, all four members of Team Ruby uh, in the Japanese dub are going to be coming uh, with, and not coming back, but they're going to be providing the voices uh, this time around for Ice Queendom, which I am excited for. So, uh, as, as I mentioned, Sayori Hayami does the voice for Ruby Rose. Uh, Yoko Hikasa does the voice for Waishini. Uh, Yu Shimear, I'm sorry if I'm butchering this, but is... Uh, the voice of Blake Belladonna is going to be done by Yu Shimara Shim, Shima Mura. I again apologize for butchering that. Uh, and Yang Xia Long is going to be done by Ami Koshimisu. Um, I am not really familiar with uh, with their uh, with their work, but I am just overall excited for this. Uh, going down the list here. Now, speaking of behind-the-scenes stuff, we are uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, who's going to be producing this, what studio, and who is directing this. Well, I'm going to tell you the uh, this is done by uh, Jen Urobashi and uh, Nitro Plus. Again, I'm not I'm not familiar with all these people, but. Being the fact that there are people in the fandom who are excited for this, and I am I'm just reading the room here, and I'm just, you know what? If you're excited, then I'm excited. That's the way I see it. <laughs> um, now, the series composition, scenario composition, will be done by To uh, Yubakata. 
Uh, the character draft is done by Huke. Uh, the director is Toshimasa Suzuki. Uh, Suzuki. Yeah, Suzuki. And the production and, and the animation production will be done by Shaft Studios, which I've never heard of Shaft Studios, but a lot of people were excited about this, and I'm just like, I'm just really just almost overwhelmed at this point with like all this information. And I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't know how to react with being that like no one has been like shitting on this, and I'm like, you know what? If the fandom is excited for this, then I feel better at ease that there's no one complaining about the choices of who is going to be directing and animating. So, again, I'm just reading the room, and I'm just uh, generally just... I am cautiously optimistic, because I don't want, like, all this hype being built up, and then people watch this, and they just get, you know point because that's that's the last thing I would want. So, um, let's talk about uh, some of these character designs. Um, now, as you can, as I will show here, that the the I guess the poster or the the cover looks absolutely amazing. Um, as you can see, it says Ruby, and then it has Ice Queendom underneath. Uh, it still uh, has Ruby in the forefront and Weiss in the back. Um, it's kind of generally giving the idea, even though it's called Ice Queendom, that Ruby is still the main character. Um, I will say that this is going to be generally taking place during... Um, I guess during the Deacon era of of the show, um, a lot of a lot of people were uh, kind of unknown about where if it was going to be picking up uh, somewhere else, whether it was going to be a maybe a letdown or something. But anyway, yeah, we do know as as I mentioned that it's going to be taking place during the uh, Beacon era, uh, like with uh, volumes 1 through 3 were, and for the most part, uh, they have, they show designs for uh, two, two uh, for the character designs. Uh, for let's go, let's check out the, the characters. Uh, now, we have Ruby Rose, which... Uh, she has her regular design, which uh, for the most part it keeps it keeps the traditional look. But then we have a a more of a wintry look. Um, it, I guess because at some point in this show, in the series, they're going to be going to a much colder climate. Uh, there is a picture with uh, Ruby uh, using a or, or holding. Some sort of a uh, snowboard of some sort. Being that, I guess she's going to be snowboarding at some point, which I am excited to see that. Um, now let's check out uh, Weiss's uh, character design. Uh, if it, if it keeps. I am so glad that it keeps her scar over her eye. It's one of the things that I look for in every design of Weiss. Because. It's a small detail, but it's something that I look for, and I make sure that everyone keeps that scar on her face. Because that, that is, like, one of the first things that I always notice about her. And here's her other design. Her, I guess, her, uh, her design, uh, and it has a description. Uh, um, yeah, basically, her outfit... As I said, it looks very militaristic, and it shows that, like, um, like she's wearing a very long jacket that drapes onto the floor, and, like, her hat has, like, a captain's hat kind of feel. Um, and it, I, what I think is kind of interesting is that her hands are not in the sleeves of the jacket, which I guess 
So it makes it easier to kind of just fling it off of her, I guess. Um, now let's take a look at Blake. Uh, this is her her uh, her beacon era look, um, and you know you know has the the bow, and then check out her her winter uh, <laughs> outfit. I love the gloves. I absolutely love the gloves. So that is that is awesome. That is awesome. I gotta say. Uh, what <laughs> what what do we have there? Ooh, hello. <laughs> Got a paw print on a uh, interesting placement. Hmm. All right, let's go check out the next one. Let's check out Yang. Uh, and you know that's her 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 outfit from the first three seasons. That she doesn't have her um, she, her arm is still intact, which is you know good to know. And then we check out her her alternate. This one it looks roughly about this, not that much different. It's close to what she wore uh, in the in the series of where she is now. Uh, she is where it has like some goggles, I guess, for when she's you know riding on uh, on her motorcycle, you know, so she didn't get anything in her face. And it's also good to know that we do we are going to have uh, John Arc. Uh, uh, and he's going to be voiced by uh, uh, Hiro Shimono. Uh, now, I don't know if uh, if Miles is going to be voicing him again this time around, but we'll, we'll find out. We will, I'm, I'm hoping that he does because it's kind of the the voice that we're so used to. Um, and his winter look and. <laughs> Not much difference. Not, not just just adding a scarf and hat and gloves. That's it. Not much different. Uh, next we have Nora Vapori. Uh, her her outfit still remaining the same. Uh, still looking cute as always. Um, and then we have her winter outfit. Who <laughs> looks? She looks like she's ready to go ice skating. <laughs> Oh man, she has. I am so glad that we are going to have Pira Nikos back in our life again. Um, I'm hoping that Jen Brown uh, reprises her uh, her role as voicing for Pira. That would be awesome. It'd be good to, it'd be good to hear her say hello again. <laughs> I miss Pira. All right. So again, this is, you know, we have as her design, as from what we remember, and this is going to be her her uh, wintery look, and oh my god. Whew, John, you, you are, you are in trouble, my friend. <laughs> oh boy. When John sees it, he, he is, his, his jaw will hit the floor, I will tell you that. Uh, and we got Lai Ren. Uh, that's his uh, original design look from the beginning of the series, and his wintry look. Uh, he's got a nice, uh, nice comfy coat on to keep him warm. He looks very, very layered. Uh, he's ready to, ready to go out into the cold. <laughs> Not wearing gloves, kind of an interesting choice. Uh, and Ozpin. Now. Ozpin does not have a uh, doesn't have a wintry look to him because if you remember, we don't see Ozpin after season three. Oh, group, he he uh, alert, he dies, but he gets uh, reincarnated in, uh, in the body of a young child named Oscar Pine. Um, now, I it's gonna be so great. Uh, I'm really hoping that Shannon McCormick, uh, again, uh, reprises his role as Ozpin. It's going to be so amazing, too. It's going to be like, 
um, you know, like a uh, nostalgic wave just hitting you, like you're just being like over in the face, just be, like over and over, and just be like, oh, I remember this. It's oh, it's gonna bring back all the feats. <laughs> oh man, Alex Prince's look is, is just he's not he is not in the mood for your shit today. He's just like I, I don't. Uh, now, the, that seems to be uh, the main uh, protagonist of the series. I'm sure we will get others that we remember from uh, from the original series. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get uh, you know, Cinder, uh, hopefully Roman. And maybe Neo, uh, maybe even uh, Salem at some point. We'll, we'll see how far this goes. But the thing is, this is supposed to be a reimagining of the like an alternate universe kind of thing with the sh with the show. Like it, it's not supposed to be like a word for word uh, retelling of the show of the original. It's going to be a lot of differences. Uh, I'm just, you know, off the top of my head anyway. Um, let's see, goods. Uh, yeah, it's basically, you know, I mentioned the figures. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Hunter, Aura, Semblance, Grim, Skull, White Tang, and yes, a lot of the. A lot of the terminology that uh, that we are all familiar with, you know, Four Kingdoms, Dale, Mistral, Atlas, Vacuo, Emerald, Faro, uh, Emerald Forest, uh, Magic, The Great War, Silver Eyed Warrior, Goddess of the Four Seasons. So a lot of the lore from the original will be, uh, at some point, be used in this. Uh, introduction and story. Uh, on air, which I'm guessing uh, the on air portion is going to be basically like where you, you're going to be streaming, you know, much like on Ruth's, Rooster Teeth website. That's just uh, that's just my that's my guess is at it. Um, yeah, so that's the, the Japanese staff who works on working on it. Um, Keith Production, Monty Boom. Rest in peace, my friend. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that pretty much covers it. It's, uh, there should be, um, I'm, I might do a reaction to, um, to the presentation that's going to expect there to be any sort of groundbreaking news that is going to be announced at this thing. Um, I do, however, you know, think I will check it out anyway, just in case there's any additional information. Um, so, so yeah, so thank you everyone for watching. Um, what are some things that you are, you are excited for in, in this upcoming series? Um, uh, let me know in the comments below, you guys. Uh, follow me on Twitter at BlackMoman10. Um, if you guys are interested in checking out, uh, my stream. Uh, I've been streaming on Twitch. You can follow me there at twitch.tv forward slash Chris Reed. That is three please. Um, here's, uh, catch you guys in the next one.